Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the newest my YouTube channel. My name is Kristen Putty, also known as Chrissy. And you have a right to one of my favorite types of videos on my channel, which is a Bible study. And today we're going to do Bible study on prophet. What is a prophet? What does a prophet exist? And who can be a prophet? So this topic, I took it because there were so many people who had this mindset that Jesus is the only prophet. In the Bible, there were so many prophets. I once did um, a short video describing of the types of influential women in the Bible and different types of prophets. So a lot of people thought, there was actually those who actually thought Jesus was the only one. Some actually believed there were other prophets, but majority of them were only men. Or they were only just men prophets or no such thing as a female prophet. So I'm today going to talk about different types of prophets. There were many. Do please check my previous um, video. It should pop up there. It will show you of all the other female prophets, all the other influential women in the Bible, talking about queens, you know, those who saved and helped other people um, in the Bible, and also prophets themselves. So if you want to know different types of prophets and who can be a prophet, like, are you a prophet and you didn't know that somebody you know have a dream and came into existence is that a prophet or just being a seer so if you want to know more about it please so for those who are new to my bible study i have my own special notes i have my digital notes and my handwritten notes and we have the one and the most powerful book in the world this is your bible that stands for basic instructions before leaving earth so we today we're going to dive into that topic of prophets and we're going to look at my notes so if you see me going up and down just know that i'm still diving into my notes and what i feel that is relevant for us to know so now we are going to look at the significance of prophets throughout the Bible history, right? Look from the um, the most high, like um, Isaiah, to the least known. You know, the ones that are popularly known, like Isaiah, to the ones that came in like, you know, they just came in as ad hoc or were less known. And also know different types of, of prophets, you know, that deliver God's message to humans which is the main reason why prophets exist they are a communication between god and you i feel like that is one of the best type of um communication i know that praying is the same thing is also great but imagine having somebody imagine having god in a human form where you can just exchange words although sometimes prophets are limited on what they should say sometimes they don't have that you know long-term connection with god they just have the temporary just to advise you on either maybe on a serious issue or on your enemies or on a situation to come it's not always easy to have that one-on-one -on -one session with a prophet while they're talking to god because they're usually here to bring that exclusive message like either god is saying do not disrespect me and Go to a certain place and tell them that they have disrespected me. They now will be ban banished or they will be tormented or something like that. So when you have those type of um, prophets, they usually just come with a message. They don't really have a dialogue type of thing. But there are those who literally come in a moment of maybe a few minutes or so that you can get. There are spiritual churches around the world where you find a prophet that actually has answers for you but again god is not a type of person to give you answers on the go if it wasn't that then you wouldn't have a testimony so remember god does give you this this is your book of answers the test you go through is what you call a testimony for those who didn't know what a testimony is a testimony is basically the test that god has put you through and deliverance that comes from it then you're able to stand by there and say through what god put me through this is who i am today this is what i've become today and through god i have become stronger i'm the child of god so that is a testimony right we have those who we can say basically failed the test because they gave up 
or they chose not to even include god in their plans and they ended up into what you call in this thing into bad habits or make the situation even worse but then again god will always put you through until you get through this if you allow him to assist you then you will have that testimony so now we're gonna go back to what we are here for right on what we're basically here for which is bible studies right so basically we need to understand not what is a prophet right so when we get into this bible study we're gonna have to understand how different types of prophets do exist right they help us appreciate the diversity of their roles and the unique ways that they communicate to people so before i even go into my notes then although they are there there's different types of prophets right like i said there are those who come only in situations where a warning is coming from god danger is coming your way warning you of future events that might cost your life or your soul or any other person in life i remember having to do a bible study when we talked about uh i'll get back about one bible um one verse way one one person or one king sorry one wealthy man in the bible i'll come back i don't know why i keep forgetting his name but he was really wealthy right man lazarus man why do i keep forgetting his name <laughs> so lazarus and the rich man he was in hell right he was burning and he cried and says please drop of water and i was like nah your family on earth have prophets they have the bible they have messengers they have every type of information to know about god so that's why prophets exist and remember the population is huge right now and a lot of people are confused on where to go so there's a need of prophets to help those who are lost find their way and by the way prophets are not perfect they are also humans they do make mistakes sometimes they are not either not eating well where their body is not strong enough to hold the information that needs to be delivered to others sometimes they don't even do the right things and they refuse to warn other people of the dangers because for example i'll use two two prophets jeremiah and joanna um john jeremiah was sent to go and warn and he went there right i figure lana mkulungulu just be like i forgive you so he no longer punishes them now how does that make jeremiah look he looks like a liar you said things are gonna come our way and we changed our ways and god did nothing so now it makes jeremiah be like you tell me to go and tell people i told them you don't do what you told them the point was that thing was people to change their ways and they did therefore god forgave them but then remember they continue they return to their ways and god did punish them so there's a lot of prophets who come to you and tell you something right and then ask heaven let's say let me let me come and tell you something like um they come and tell you that your friend is trying to sabotage you for a job interview now you're cautious of your friend now you start talking you don't even talk much about your friend you make sure you protect yourself you get the job and be like oh the woman told me the nye, 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 but now i got my job if you were not cautious of a friend and you kept spilling everything you would have not gotten that job the fact that god came to warn you and you took it into consideration you got the job but if somebody warned you and be like i skim fanaga they will never do that to me you were gonna lose it so remember just because somebody came and warned you something and it did not happen the way they told you doesn't mean that that person was a liar that person was from god telling you hey, edge be cautious so that you can get something if you were not warned you would have not gotten it so and there's some people they warn you now and during it's gonna happen in 20 years right the point of god telling you now 
is for you to pray that when that 20 has come, that danger must not not destroy you or kill you or have a huge impact. You will just be like, eh, hey, and I can pour in Quebec. Yo. You know that feeling in Gabega Say Rabiana, it would have happened like this. If I didn't do this, it would have happened like that. So they tell you something like guys, I'm not and again, remember, God does not need your money. So if a prophet wants money from you, know that that person is not a prophet. Some of them are prophets, but but there are so many, especially South Africans, there's so many spiritual churches that you can go to and you will find a prophet in those churches that don't require money. Nali, what we in South Africa we call it the Vikragata Moya. Spiritual churches. They do not require money from you. So if a prophet comes to you and say, Pay me, then you know there's something off. That some of you are so desperate to know about your future that even those who are, are are of goodness end up turning bad because you're willing to give away anything just to know what's going to happen in the next 10, 5 years or second or 2 years. There are those who, who can see your future can need and they do require payment. But then again, that shouldn't be the way you're supposed to know your future. Sometimes I feel that God already shows you things. Remember, the best way God to communicate with you is while you're sleeping right then you have the dream don't go around fa 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 or i had a dream of what this i had a dream of this i had a dream of this go if you're south african i'm not sure about other countries but i know there's a lot based on the research i had there's a lot of spiritual churches similarly to the south african churches in south africa go to a spiritual church I'm pretty sure they're going to assist you. No payment whatsoever. Go there and say, I had this dream and it's troubling me. What is the dream that you have? If those churches are not existent in your country, kneel down and say, God, I've, I've seen and I've heard your dream. Right? I've seen what you've shown me, but I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on in the dream. God will give you a way on how to unfold the dream. I promise you, he will. He's either going to say, focus on a certain thing, focus on what this thing means and what that means. What do you have one plus one? Farah. You now can see, oh, this dream was like this. Because most of you guys, now, you don't understand the dream. Now, let's say you had a dream of Ogogwaku. Since it's a pop since women are popularly known for witchcraft. I don't know where we get that, but anyway, let's say you have a dream about your grandmother. You see your grandmother in fire. And she's dancing in fire. In your head, you'll be like, I'll oh, go, 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 yeah, lawyer. She, my grandmother is, 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 is a witch. She's bewitching. You find that they're trying to tell you your grandmother is in danger. She's in danger. That's, that happiness you're seeing, it's actually sadness. She's trying to get up, but she can't get out. So you see what I'm trying to say? Dreams, like in the Bible, there's parables. And pretty much you guys know what parables is. They're, they're mostly in New Testament. There's parable. The dream could say it doesn't could be opposite. So most of you guys be like, ah, kukwa, kilo, rilo, kukwa, lawyer. I had a dream and she was trying to kill me. Kinda they're trying to say her the person that you saw who was trying to kill was actually trying was it's actually has somebody with similar um maybe similar images like you. Let's say for example your grandmother, there's another cousin of yours. Once Ogogo's house, once your grandmother's house, and wants to kill your grandmother. So that fire represents danger. Your grandmother is in danger. They show you. The reason why they show you, that means you're on a cousin. Same age as you. Or same characteristics like you. Sometimes a dream doesn't end there. That's the along. It's a feeling, guys. There's a film. 
don't just see one dream and go jump and go say, yeah yeah sometimes you could actually put yourself in danger by not asking god to reveal the whole thing to you it's always best to pray for each part or something tender Ooh, yeah tenders pray pray about it because then you you know okay i had i had this dream pray about it not so not so another day you're gonna see Raman something this thing feels like a whole movie then you guys will stop jumping to conclusion and going to about lawyer about tagaza there's somebody bewitching me say so something who's trying to do, sometimes they are trying to do something bad to you but with god today who can do any, who can do anything to you no one but then again always be safe right be safe so like i'm like right now what i'm trying to say is that majority of the people in this world are also prophets if you have dreams you're so more somehow a prophet to yourself to others sometimes god is talking to you remember god is uses you to talk to humanity so when you say hi guys then i also had a dream or something and then this happened we understand that why but when you have a dream and you haven't seen it manifest, remember when you have a dream, when that incident happens, I feel now it's like deja vu. Have you ever had that feeling of, hey man, I've been here before. It's actually a dream. God has taken you to that place before. It's not happening. Now you have that scenery of, oh, new deja vu. Oh, this is what was happening. This is what God meant. That's a way to prove that God exists. God exists not so. I'm telling you, that's how God exists. It's really, it's really, really tough to always convince people that God is there. But every time, I mean, like, come on, you guys, you can feel that God exists. You are God yourself. Like he said in the new, in the in Genesis. He blew air into Adam. He, you, like Jesus said, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. Meaning, the air that's inside of you is God. That's why He always fights for you to come back to Him. Your whole life is to come back to God. Because when you die, your soul goes back to God. But if you choose not to go the way that God wants you, your soul will go to the devil. And that's not. God, and that's not God's job. That's not God's um intention. The Father's in me, and I'm in the Father. Jesus, God blew air into Adam. Think about it, guys. And we are descendants of Adam. Think about it. Your whole life, you're fighting to get to God. Because why? Inside of you, it's God. He's fighting to go back to Him. So in him, he's fighting to lead you there. That's why by the time your body is a temple of God. Because inside of there, there's, the soul that is inside of you is God. You are God. The soul that you have is God. Your whole life from the time your parents was conceived with you to this very time you're going to die. Your whole life is to fight to make sure that you well, if you die, your soul who sticks and goes back to God. You go back where you came from. So do you guys understand? The soul that's inside of you is God. One person once asked me, and I, I've said it before in one of my Bible studies. He said, where is God? And I said, God is inside of you. And then this one was like, you know, somebody said, hey, God is somewhere you need to find. God is inside of you. The minute you allow the devil to come in your life, you're distancing yourself from God. Now that means that soul that he knew, it's been tarnished. And it's now, it filled with the devil. So you, God is inside of you. That's why they say, pray in silence. And do not pray out loud. Because the only person who can hear your prayer when your mouth is closed is God. How can he hear your prayers if your mouth is closed? Because it's inside of you. 
That's where God is. That's why before you do everything, pray. Because you are unleashing the fact that you are allowing what's inside of you to take control of you, which is inside of you, is God. That's why God, they say God sees everything. Because it's inside of you, it's in every animal, in every wind, in every plant, in every tree, in every person, in every, everything is in, in this world. God is in it. It's in it. And if you allow yourself to get back, have you, like there's a lot of people right now, no? besides the ones who actually mock those who have transitioned or changed. There's a lot of people trying to say, I want to get closer to God. God is fighting to get back because your soul is there, but the spirit is now somewhere. The spirit of God is somewhere else. Your soul is there, which is God. But it's been tarnished by the devil. Regardless of how powerful God is. That's why they, they, they always had that irresolution of the devil and the angel. If you allow yourself to listen to the devil more than God, you're pushing away the strength of the Holy Spirit. And you're putting the demonic spirit. What I'm trying to say. God is already inside of you. You just need to fight to keep him louder than the devil. I always tell people, okay, why does it always, that decision you make, there's always that loud decision. Because God is quiet and God is calm. God is quiet and God is calm. The devil is loud and he is rude. And he will make you do have you always thought to yourself when you before in Ilum when you told like a man? Have you ever said, nah, I mean, nah, hi, I'm gonna do this? Hey, you, you, your voice even goes up when you're making it, you're trying to convince yourself to do a wrong decision. Hi, I've worked so hard, I need to. Ah. That's why I, money doesn't come in places that are loud. Love, okay, money loves places that are quiet and calm. That's why rich people live in quiet places. Lena, msindu. Ima lenya pum. Whenever you're loud. Mm -hmm. Many comes when it's quietness. When you're quiet and you're calm. Ima lenge. When you're loud, nya pum. But then now, let's go back to the prophet. So now I, I'm pretty much sure you guys understand, no goti. How do prophets, um... How does God communicate to them, right? And how they are inside of you, and how you know different diversity it is the good and the bad, amen. So now we're gonna go into the definition of prophets. Prophets, we're gonna do the difference, right? Definition and the purpose of prophets. Prophets are individuals called by God to speak on his behalf. They are given divine insight and messages that are meant to guide and warn and encourage the people. He came in the form of a fly. <laughs> the Hebrews or the words of the prophet is Nabi, which means spokesperson, one who speaks for another. The primary process of a primary purpose of a prophet is to reveal God's will and to call people back to faithfulness. Okay, so I guess now we know Uguti, what is a prophet. A prophet is a spokesperson of God. Angry, he speaks. That's why you find kings; they have people who speak for them, and usually those people are prophets, spokespersons. Right? So, a prophet is a spokesperson because they're able to talk to people. Right? They're able to persuade people. They're able to engage people. They need, they're able to interact with people. Right? Which God can do that. But he realized that humans are more in, in tune with human touch and human interaction. That's why most people want to pray in front of an idol. Some people want to pray in front of Rosera. 
people want to pray in front of a bible people yeah like they a lot of people feel in tune with pray in front of an object so god decided on no man to show um excuse me for to for me to show people that amen hey i'm here i will come with a human element now all you know you can feel when you talk to somebody you know this woman this man this lady when they were speaking to me i could feel like hey this person is talking to me because it's god it's god it's talking to you because god knows what's going on with you and remember god will never just put a random person in your life to just talk to you and jay some people that god puts in your life already experience what you went through so when you come and say that story god be like when i have put you through that journey come and tell and testify to this child so and give them the testimony of the journey that you went through so that they understand what they're going through. Yeah, so, like I was telling one other person, there are three types of prophets that I know. We will go into different names. There are those who are born with the gift. From the time they were, they were conceived to the very day they die. They are prophets. It's not something that is simplified at all today. Hey, nothing here. From the day they are born, they are prophets. Those are the ones that are mostly hurting. They find their parents are finding themselves having to move from one place to another. They have to hide their child. Oh, their child is always tested. You know, when, I, when they say your child is like, you know, they're, they're fighting for their lives. This is a fight. They try and kill that baby from the time they conceived. They want to cause that miscarriage from there. They want to kill that baby. Because they know the minute that child comes on earth. Yo, those who are bad and those who are evil will have it. And God's people will not be saved. Like for example, Jesus. Not saying that those children are Jesus, but they have the similar journey that Jesus would probably have to go through. Those children suffer from the time they're conceived to go from their uterus. Their parents also suffer because it's a, this person is an angel. It's a prophet on earth. They are being striked. They will try to kill their child from birth, guys. You know when they say you, when I, they want to kill you? They want to bury you. They want to destroy you. Because if they don't get you, you will destroy them. I'm telling you, there's many stories of such people. Probably could be one of the examples of why there's so many um, child human trafficking. There's so many children that are human trafficked. Because a relative will realize that this child is... Is the can again the Messiah of the family? Because they let me give it that's that. And that's an example. And they say this child is the one who's gonna break the generational curse or the reveal what was hidden. Now, when you find uncles and aunties and grandmothers and what what and what, what trying to kill the child because they know good say so that's the type of people that you find you know not every child are there there are some parents but to exaggerate that look around two years that no no there's some parents they just crave that thing fella that it's really said and they crave that image of saying my child is a spiritual child we are all spiritual but just is not gifted there's a different you are all spiritual but that those are gifted your child is just sick. They need a doctor. Guapel. Your child, probably you when you're pregnant, you are not eating healthy. You're not doing they're the right, doing the right things. So now, we need to understand that those ones are from birth. They come with that girl. Give would you say if it? Oh, John the Baptist. There's so many. Right? 
they fall under that leaf. Yeah, from they are spiritually gifted from there. Their whole life, below they share. Yeah. Those are the type of prophets that you'll find. Their whole life. They do get successful, but but they share. You know, they all travel the whole life. Their life is never easy. They get they're blessed, but their life is never easy. You know, you'll find a person being very successful, I'm a Porsche or I'm a Zarazi, but they are not living that life that you think they are living. Because spiritually they are always being tested. They're always being trained because the whole majority most of them they hold the world on their shoulders if they don't praise things happen if they don't do the right things you know that's why they feel they want to kill them from birth because they know her hour oh this world we have it's gonna turn into chaos if they're not around they will not be able to take people out of changed areas you know so those are the type of prophets that of the whole life by they're working right then you find temporary um, um, prophets, right? Those are the ones who they had the whole life. There was no sign of any spiritual giftness, that nothing. They lived, they lived, and then all of a sudden, something, just one episode in their life just became a distraction, right? So now, some, of, for example, some of them lose their jobs, they are... They like literally they just lose everything in Genji, like job. They lose everything as a way of God's calling them to be spiritually called. That's when those people you for example, there are people be like they're very successful and then God calls them ne? to come and work for them, to become a pastor. <laughs> to become uh yeah, you know that spiritual guidance um People are just living their lives and all of a sudden they're now being called to become a prophet. So they, they're just for them, that time until a certain period of time when they are prophets. Then the ad hoc prophets, there's a lot of them. Those are the ones that at that certain point in life, the ad hoc ones are usually the ones that just come at that certain period of time. For example, let's say you there's a concert, right? And all of a sudden, like final final destination, yeah, and so um, at that point you're there, event, and you're feeling uneasy. You're starting to see signs like be away, eh? You know, you're starting to see all this, yeah, nah, Weird things that is scaring you or like something bad is coming. At that point in life, God is coming to you to warn that a hey, majority of you guys are going to die here. So God is coming to you at that point in life. Not that you're, you're a permanent one. At that point in life, it's only you who is a prophet. So you now need to save all those thousands of people at the concert because probably maybe the ground will break down and then people fall down inside the ground or the building is gonna crash or yeah something bad is gonna happen so at that point in life because you are maybe spiritually strong or you're spiritually aligned uh, or you believe in such things and god is able to connect with you more you're not going to be ignorant about it you actually you will actually take it into con in seriousness and be like hey guys we need to leave here and I'll, you don't you have those friends to be like hey guys i feel bad yo. like guys let's just leave this place i feel like there's something bad's gonna happen that's why and if you're like oh when are you uptight you're like oh, i wanna go and those are the type of ad hoc prophets you know at that specific time that person is god is talking to him at that point like there's a lot of people you find they'll be like i don't want to go to this place and they're forcing them and then they actually something bad happens they actually die or someone close to them die and be like i knew that they didn't want to go that they didn't want to go that you guys forced me so those are the type of ad hoc prophets they are they are the frequency of spiritualness is high 
Therefore, God is able to connect with them to warn those who are not frequently high. You know what? So, those are the ad hoc ones. Give a loring once in a while. Yeah, nah. If they invite wherever they are, God can connect to them and they become that um, three or four, five or one day type of prophets. Right? They are just those are the ones that are most popular amongst a lot of people. Probably a majority of the people in the world they actually relate to that type of ad hoc. And like those who are born from birth, it's just their job. They, it's all for them to pray, they fast, they go to mountains, they yeah, and then there are those who just automatically at that time they just from a certain period of time until then, yeah, when are they now prophets? And that those who go to in that moment, right now, so we are now going to go into major and minor prophets, right? Major and minor prophets do not refer to the importance of the prophets themselves, but rather the length of the book associated with them. Have you noticed I'm buying this like Mika? Mika is a short, is one of the shortest, um, Bible, um chapters in the bible you find also ecclesiastes you also find Ujuele, Zachariah, and all that those are those they're more likely to be ad hoc prophets so they're and minor prophets then there are those major ones you know those ones who have john or john one john two john three boo 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 kings one kings two yeah, those ones you can see where they are. this is a whole book. Those are the ones you find is more likely to be with the yeah, one of those big, big, big um major ones. Jesus from the start to the end, he was a major prophet. He was born with it. We just they were born with it. That's so. Then there are those who just be called like with job also. Or prophet. It was just and in motor and then all of a sudden had to become uh, a temporary prophet just to testify what's God's job. So you find those ones, the Tana Libu Ruthi, the female prophet. She became a an ad hoc prophet. Because at that period of time she had to fast for her jewels, the jewel um clan. So you are wanna hurry what they mean major and minor. So the major prophets are like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Those are extensive prophecies because like they literally have visions. They literally send. They're on a job. They're always working, right? Like Jesus himself. And then you find body minor prophets. Zachariah, I'm pretty much you guys don't even know these people because I never let Bible let Alena Malaki. Their messages are well shorter and equally vital. All events are really important, but the period that they've been called to, to work for God as prophets, man, then there are those who ring the throughout the Bible or more, not all is mentioned a lot. Oh, one sorry, this is like a major prophet. Come on, they work throughout the Bible. They're the majority of the time they're there, so we know those ones in the with the major prophecies are one of those who are they are more likely to be born with the gift or the time of prophecies was long. And then the ad hocs are the ones who are gonna they were chosen to be a prophet. I hope this makes sense because I'm telling you that to this very day we still have prophets. This thing of having this image that there's only one prophet, it's not true. We still have prophets to this very day. To this very day, we have them. They are the good and the bad. They are the good and the bad. Types of prophets. And pretty much you guys have this one. You, you know about this one. The seers. Also known as the visionaries. Seers are prophets who are received in divine revelation through visions and dreams. Example of Samuel, who was referred as the seer in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9. So now let's go to it. I, f 
I feel some at some point I should also go live here. Like in cool men now, like guys intensively you guys can ask me questions and hopefully me I might able to answer them by God's grace. So we can talk. So yeah. So it's one Samuel chapter nine verse nine. It says Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire to God, he said, Come, let us go to, see, go to, to the seer. For today's prophet was similarly called a seer. They see through the vision. Some of them, they just sit down and they can see a whole feeling of, eh, That accident. or eh, yo, Some can actually see good things. It's not always bad. It's just that usually bad events are more remembered than the good ones. Nah. So they are able to see that Then we see the prophetic writers These are prophets such as Isaiah, Jeremiah Who wrote down the prophecies Which are perceived in the scripture The writings contain both intimate uh, in Immediate messages And future predictions Those are the ones that we usually have Yeah, they usually, they usually become academics Most of them are academics like in this Jane era, if you want to see if somebody is a prophetic writer, you see them in academics. They have this passion to write. And you, you feel it when you read that book. Or like, I read this book and I feel it. For example, why am I even going for Martin Luther King? When you read, when you feel it, yeah. I'm reading Omaka X or Bo Oprah Winfrey or any other person. When you read, you can feel or man, hey guys, this thing feels like there's a lot of them, especially in the um Islam, Buddha, even the Bible. You find those type of people when they read the Bible, you feel like this is actually a prediction. You're in the future, there will people who won't be um, listening to their parents they won't be using um, pens anymore they're using digital the cars will be flying the A so we still have those people to this very day who actually predict oh man in the future one two three or oh, this is gonna happen uh, uh, right or edge I predict in next year hurry somebody's gonna die you find those weird ones on Facebook or, or on social media they, they tweeted that somebody's gonna die so you find those prophetic you still have them on social media you find or they had a dream and the dream is that oh uh, my mom is gonna die next year or somebody in this world is gonna die next year those are the prophetic writers they also write books they also tweet they also write the random status on social media and you're like and then why not they even write short novels most of them are really writers more than just a person on social media they're really just the writers i'm just not the writers but they do have a passion of actually writing rather than speaking so now we have ecstatic prophets these prophets such as those associated with elijah and elisha are known for the intensive dramatic manifestation of spirit leading to men miraculous events those are the ones who go to they they, they speak like when they speak ne? like you're like yeah this person's gonna like they, they they literally come and tell you like hey one two three those are the ones that we say that yeah they oh are like they literally call you and say hey your one two three is gonna happen in your life because one two three one is gonna happen it's one of those prophets that come to you and say i i I see something in you. I see that you have a potential. I see you have a business idea. Or I see you that hey, later I want to do. Yeah, they, it's one of those people who just speak. And nothing actually comes into existence. Like I, I see you graduating. I see you buying a house. I see you buying a Maserati. I see you get a big promotion. Or I see you starting a business. Or I see you. So yeah, those are the type of ones that they prepare and it comes into existence. The court prophets. These were the prophets who served within royal courts, like North Nathan, who was a prophet to a king. They provided counsel and guidance to the king, and they were involved in matters of national importance, which we still have once in palaces and in also in government as well. We do, although I guess they do make mistakes, 
they're human they sometimes they don't do right so they get misled by the holy spirit um those ones like i said they are right hands of of the kings they speak on behalf of the king these are the ones who see they research they meet with people they talk with people that's why you find politicians there's always that deputy um vice president of a political party who is now engaging with people yabona he's talking to the kids he's talking to everyone because he are now able to interact with people right and therefore once they're able to interact with people they're, they're able to provide a guideline a vision for people because based on what they hear they are able to predict to her okay based on what we met with these people and what we look this is the predictions that we're going to see for the country in the next few years have you ever heard that we are predicting that in the next few years this country is going to be one two three those are the people they might take it as a career but it's actually a gift like economics they they have that then we have judgment prophets these prophets like amos and mika are known that the strong measured uh, repentance and warnings of divine judgment against sin and in judgment right so let me say what example let me use maybe our own close to home Bo, maybe nelson mandela per se who Winnie Mandela, and so many other activists. Those are the ones we also talk about setting the right way. Yeah, one. So those are prophets that fight for the truth. They fight for the against genocide. Will fight like they're activists. Let me in summary. They literally fight against wrongdoing because they're leading to the right way. Remember, prophet is to lead you in the right way. So if you are being misled or you're being derived of the truth or you're, you're being prevented from being in the right spiritual wing, they fight for that. Not all activists are right. I know you guys want to talk about it, all types of activists. Not all of them. They fight for those who are right for the right thing, save people from slavery, who save people from you know when people are being told that if you serve this god we're going to kill you those are the type of people who fight for for their people those type of prophets then you find the messistic prophets these are such as isaiah who prophesies about the coming of messiah providing hope and intercession of a future savior so these are the ones like for example they talk about, yeah this basically i think it's a very clear it's like those who talk about jesus jesus is coming jesus is doing this they they literally give you those type of signs and revelations of jesus is here or jesus is to come those are the type of prophets that now they are like yeah they actually provide that that hope or no man this i don't know i don't know how to give an example maybe i can give an example for let's say a a, a person who fights for drug dealers i mean drug dealers drug victims all right they'd be like future is coming for you you're gonna do great for you i see greatness for you i see everything you will be saved there will be somebody who's gonna come and save you there will be somebody who's come and protect you and take you out of this misery so i it's i think i can use that as an example for today's situations those are the type of people who just come and give you like oscar there's gonna be a person that will listen until it was successful so okay so that was my addi additions to the type of prophets that i know so now okay now i hope we understand this the role of prophets in the new testament let me put it like this now Pro let me read it right in the new testament prophecy plays a vital role just like in the old testament However, John the Baptist was considered one of the most 
and the latest testimonial style prophets. Ne? Handling the coming of Jesus. The New Testament also speaks of, of the gift of prophecy a lot. Ne? Within the church, they've seen in the book of Acts, we've seen in Paul, and we've seen in letters that prophecy is still active and relevant in the life of church. Like I said today, we still have prophets in this very day. We had the ad hoc ones, the ones who are at that point when they say something, that something actually happens. The one that says something and that thing actually happens. The one who actually instills hopes. Labo Maka, I say, Ponose Mandela, Labo Mama. All that. They instill hope. It doesn't matter what type of prophet it is. They're still active to this very day. You could be one and you never knew. Or you just be like, and they'll be like, nah. So we need to pay attention to that, guys. We need to pay attention to the fact that you could you could actually be a prophet yourself. There's a point in some way that hey man, you realize what I man. I actually saved someone. If I wasn't there or I didn't go there, God used me to So now we're going to talk about the relevance of prophets today. Nah? Even though biblical prophets are no longer with us, their messages are still relevant and resonate with us in our modern lives. I mean, if you think about regardless of the changes in the world, we still have a tablet just like the Ten Commandments. We have digital things. We still have speakers. We still have people who travel from one place to another place to travel in another world. So it still resonates with us. We still have the message and we still know people who give us life teachings and messages you find motivational short videos you find all that so we still have that and we still communicate and we still he speaks his truth into existence so guys i i don't want to go and dwell in much but i believe like right now you guys know what a prophet is and you're more likely to be one you're more likely to be experienced or being in the presence of one right they play a really crucial role in our lives they are able to talk to god through us they serve god's narrative and they serve the message that god wants us to to come to it comes in a vision and writings in speaking in videos in music in counsel in, in judgment even through a simple dialogue you can feel it like i'm hey, man this person was actually talking to me God was talking to me through this person. How did this person say something that relates to me? So we gain a deeper insight into God's will and an ongoing importance of prophecy in our spiritual lives. So I I I did some. So 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 now I'm just gonna end it off here. You know. But I'm gonna end it off with just a few questions that I hope maybe you guys will understand. Yaori, what messages of the Old Testament prophets apply to our living lives now? And in what ways can we see a role of a prophecy continuing in church today? What are the characteristics that distinguish a seer from other prophets? And how do, do you differentiate between a major and a minor prophet? So guys, I'm going to leave you with the love of God, with God's grace and God's love and God's presence. And I hope this helped you guys to understand and know what's the difference between a prophet and a seer and, other, and see other different types of prophets out there. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you, you engaged and in, you know, no, you're not in tune, you're not talking. So guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share so that we can spread the word of God and other people can also experience this um, type of testimony. And we all are now delivering and having this great um, studies together so that we leave no one behind and that God says, the message has been passed on on earth. Why didn't you share it to another person? Why didn't you allow somebody also to have the deliverance that you're having? So let's spread the word and share this video. And I hope that you guys also also amplify um Bible studies on your videos, like having Bible verses or everything in it. Please do so. 
guys from love of god and love you all from the blood the brother and sisterly love from god i hope you have a great day a great night